Hi everyone, got another product review for you. What you're looking at here is the M20 Warrior from Olight. Thank you so much to the folks at gadzooks.com for hosting this review. Um, let me just get started and show you guys some of the features of this new light. I've been playing with this for a couple of days now and seriously I think this is a great buy. I'll show you why. So opening the box, you get this nice instruction manual. Always read the manual so you can learn about how to properly use your equipment as well if any problems go wrong. And while we're on the manual here, let me just go over some of the specs. Looking at the output, there are two versions of the Warrior. There's the M20 Warrior Premium and the M20 Warrior Standard. The main difference here is just uh, the brightness of the bulb and the run times. But even going with the Standard, if you're running at low setting, which is 6 lumens, you get 150 hours of battery life. At 80 lumens, the medium setting, you get 12 hours. And even at the highest setting, 230 lumens, you get 4 hours. That's incredible. I mean, for most flashlights on the highest setting, you get one hour, maybe an hour and a half. Now, granted, most flashlight companies overestimate uh, the battery times, but even if this was half that, two hours is actually really decent. We also see that uh, it lists the dimensions and the weight. Don't worry, I'll uh, post all of the specs as well as the features of this uh, flashlight in the detail section of the video. Uh, while we're on that, just move this out of the way. You have this nice little diagram of the different parts. Always check this out because uh, I really needed to watch this to make sure I knew how to fully disassemble and how to use this light. Getting into the box itself, you get a bunch of different goodies. You get two CR123 batteries, which is what this runs off of. You get a nice nylon sheath or case. And then you get the flashlight itself. I'll get to the flashlight in a second, but first I want to talk about the sheath and all the little goodies that come inside of it for a second. Nice heavy-duty nylon sheath. Uh, comes with a uh, Velcro strap. I would have preferred snaps, but actually uh, if you check out another review I made, uh, I'd show you how to put a snap onto your gear and make it usable. On the back here you have a nice little lanyard ring. So you could tie this technically as a lanyard, a little bit heavy around the neck, but you also could clip this into the side of your pack and have it on the pack. Or if you have a belt, what they did here with the sheath, which I really like, is they have this Velcro strap, so you can just actually have your belt across here and fasten it with Velcro, and it'll be on your belt at your side ready to go. Opening this guy up, you get one battery magazine. It's a great way to carry the two batteries, so you have one thing to worry about instead of two. So I'm just going to unscrew that and put them in right now. And while I'm talking about it, if you get the chance, you get one battery mag, but I really recommend you buy two more because that way you'll have one battery mag riding inside of the flashlight. The cool thing is this sheath has elastic pouches on either side, so you could stick two more battery mags on either side. So then you'll have one in the flashlight and then two backups. So then even counting uh, the incredible battery life that the light gets anyway, you'll have two backups. So you'll be ready for most expeditions with this light. Going into more of the little goodies, you get this nice little nylon lanyard with a quick release clip. So you could actually clip it here on this D-ring right here and then have it swinging or hanging off your neck if you wanted to. You have a pocket clip and then to use this pocket clip, if you just want to have this clipped into your pants and you don't want to use the holster, you want to stick this inside of a cargo pocket or something with a clip hanging out. Um, if you turn the light, let's see if I can get it focused on the camera. You see this little notch right here? That's where the clip sticks out of. Now, you, most of you are going to want to just stick it on, but that's not going to be secure. It's just going to come right off like that. What you want to do is you want to unscrew it a little bit to free up some space so that this spacer can slide up a little bit. You're going to have to slide it up. See, now you have that room. Now you can slide in, and then this clip area fits inside of that little notch, like so. Then you screw it back down. And this ring presses down over the ring. Now it's not going to come off, and it's going to be very secure, and it's going to hold it in place. So now, if you don't want to use the holster, you can just clip this on the inside of your pants pocket. Then, still more goodies. In this little baggie, you have a tactical ring. So this ring right here that you see that's 
on the flashlight. You can actually take this out and replace it with this tactical ring. I'll go to this in, into this in a second and show you how to use this on the flashlight, how to mount it on, as well as uh, what technique to use this for uh, when using this in conjunction with a firearm. And even more stuff. They're really kind enough to give you this little plastic baggie with some extra O-rings and in addition you have a clear presser switch. So instead of this uh, black rubber pressure switch that you have at the end right here, you can replace it with this clear one. I'm not going to change it out. I'm going to keep this as a backup in case this gets damaged by like the black color. It just gives it a nice sleek uniform look about it. Just put this on the side. And while I'm here, let's go into the flashlight itself. So here, um, you're going to notice you have a nice aggressive um, tactical impact head right here. My friend Jess likes to call them a headache maker. So you can use this as a striking surface. Now mainly that's because this light is geared towards law enforcement and military people. So nice aggressive surface and if you look at these edges it's really not sharp but uh, you see this doing some serious damage. But if you don't want the look of this, say you're carrying this light and you uh, want a little bit more subdued appearance, this section actually unscrews off. In fact you'll see that this light is incredibly modular. You can add in take away different uh, features as you see fit. So there's just a simple ring, unscrews off, and then you can store it away somewhere for later. Then if you look on the side, this looks like just like a regular old flashlight. Now, uh, a little bit tactical still. Um, this body is made out of hard anodized aluminum. It's supposed to be waterproof because as you'll see soon enough, uh, there's a bunch of O-rings wherever there's a screw section. And um, the aluminum is uh, hard treated as well. So you can drop this, throw this in the water, you're not going to have to worry about it. And I really like the check ring here that they put on the side. It's not so aggressive that it'll uh, hurt your hand, but it's enough to feel like you got a good purchase on the uh, flashlight itself. I'm just going to replace and put the ring back on. And then, see this grip area? You can actually unscrew this section right here. And now, this is the lens and it's supposed to be scratch and impact resistant and what you can do is you can replace this lens with other lenses uh, offered and sold separately by Olight. You have three choices. You have green, you have red if you want to go tactical. There's also kind of a frosty white which is a diffuser so that the light fans out instead of being focused as a single beam. Uh, typically I think uh, for most civilian uses this clear lens is going to be the most useful but if you guys like running tactical you might want to get the red lens as well. And then, grabbing onto this section, you unscrew the head, and then you can add the battery magazine. Or if you want, you can add just the separate batteries, but I prefer to put in the magazine, because not only does it keep the two batteries together in one package, but the magazine keeps the batteries from rattling inside. So once you have this inside of the flashlight, it's going to be silent when you shake it around. Now as you see, this is a bottom pressure switch, unlike some flashlights with the switches here. So, I really like that. You can just grab this in a hammer grip, and then using just your thumb, you can activate it. Whoops, sorry guys. I played with this thing so much that I used up the battery, so then I had to replace the batteries inside the magazine. Anyways, back to the actual flashlight review. Um, as I was saying, there's a bottom activated flashlight instead of having a switch right here. So basically you can hold it in a hammer grip and then you just use your thumb to activate it. Uh, a lot of people like this for tactical shooting just because. And I have a red gun right here, which is just a uh, harmless polymer training gun. Uh, what people do is, let's see if I can get this all in frame, is they like to shoot it in what's called the Harry's technique. Basically what happens is you have your hand holding the flashlight like so. Then you have the handgun on top, and you use this bottom hand as a rest to hold the light, and then you have the gun on top right here, pointing. Fortunately, it's hard to see. Now, you don't hold it sideways, you're holding it upright. Uh, you'll probably see this technique uh, a lot in Hollywood through movies and television. They probably made that really uh, popular. A lot of people who shoot Weaver-style stance uh, like the Harry's technique just because it fits how uh, you have... Uh, one arm completely straight, and then you have the secondary uh, support arm bent underneath, and it just fits really well with uh, the weaver technique of shooting. So uh, that's one way of using it. Another thing you can do, though, 
is what I'm going to do is I'm going to unscrew this bottom cap and I'm going to replace it, this little uh, ring piece, with the tactical ring. So let's do that right now. Let's see if I can get this little plastic baggie open. In fact, you know what? I'm going to pause this camera again and then I'll restart the video once I've placed this on. Cool. So I've gotten this out of the bag. I've removed the tail cap and also you'll notice that when you remove the tail cap you can also access the magazine, the battery magazine from the back as well. So basically I'm just going to unscrew this little ring right here. Put it off to the side. Whoops. And then I'm going to screw in if I can get this ring up. This tactical ring right here, like so. And screw this base cap. Now you have a tactical ring around the base of your light. Now the reason for this is they use what's called the Rogers technique, also known as the cigar technique, because you're holding it like you're holding a cigar between your middle and forefinger, like so. And people like this because you can hold it like this, and while gripping your hand, you can still use the last two, your pinky and your ring finger, of your support hand to grab the hand holding the handgun, like so. And you hold it like this and you use the pressure of your palm against the flashlight to activate it. So people who shoot isosceles stance and use both hands and hold it like so, you can just punch out both your arms straight and still have the ability to activate the light while still having both your hands onto the handgun. And getting to the actual function of the flashlight, enough about technique, the flashlight itself has four different modes. You got low, you have medium, you have high, and then you have strobe. So if you want just contact, all you have to do is depress the switch ever so slightly without pressing all the way, and you have it based on contact. If you pre depress it all the way in and hear the click, it's going to be stuck on that setting. And to adjust the modes, I'm going to just sign it here. Basically, you just screw the top cap over and then back to change the setting. So I'm going to do this and then back and it's on high, I screw it over and back it's on high. that was on medium, this is high and then back to strobe, then I screw it back it's on low, and then over and back medium, over and back to high, which is really bright and then over and back to strobe and then I just push it to turn it off this has memory as well, so whenever you turn it on it's going to go back to whatever it was on previously so if I hit the switch, it's going to go back to strobe because that's the last setting I had it at I'll just put it at low. So in a test for this light, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my backyard. It's about midnight right now, so I'm going to talk really quietly on the film, and I'm going to show you guys what this looks like uh, shined from one end of my backyard into the fence, just to give you guys an idea of the different modes. I'm not going to talk just because I don't want to disturb the neighbors, but I'll put little notes showing what the different modes are and uh, the distance. So I'll be right back in the yard. All right, guys, so we're in my backyard right now. And this is on the low setting, and I'm actually shining it on the back tree of my yard. It's about, say, about 45, 50 feet away. I'll give you precise measurements when daylight comes around. I just bring a tape measure. But this is off, so as you can see, it's completely dark. I put it on low. It's a really low setting, so it's pretty good if you're just pointing at the ground. And you just need it for close-in objects. I wouldn't really use it for past, say, about 20 feet. So you can see here, you've got the grass right here. These are the steps in my backyard. And then, if I twist it over, you see a significant difference right here with the medium. The medium shines really well. At about 50 feet, you can see this back tree. And even then, in addition to the main cone of light, you have this aurora around it. And that stretches about, oh, let's say about, you got a good 30 feet circle, in addition to the main light in the middle. And that's just the middle setting. Let me just turn it on to high. This is high. You can see how bright this thing is. I mean, this is blinding. And you can get the high setting according to the manual for up to four hours. So that's incredible. So now let me just show you what the strobe looks like. Give you guys a headache. And that's about it. So once again, let me just show you again. Low. Good for things up close. 
medium, good if you want good performance, but at the same time you want an extended battery life. I usually run most of my lights on medium just because it's a good compromise between the two. High if uh, you really want to be a jerk and blind somebody. And then strobe in case you need to get somebody's attention. So that's about it. Go back inside and I'll talk about some more of the features of the light. Hey guys, just wanted to show you what the uh, M20 Warrior looks like mounted onto a rifle. Uh, Olight offers, as I said before, a offset weapon mount and so fits any standard 1913 size Picatinny rail and this is a Smith & Wesson M&P 1522. Now uh, this is an actual firearm, not an airsoft or a replica, so we're going to safety check it. As I turn it over here, you're going to see that there is no magazine in the magwell. I'm going to lock the charging handle back, turn it over, and we're going to do a visual and tactile inspection of the chamber. And even after the safety check, we're going to treat it like it's loaded at all times. I have a bookshelf here and here, and I'm at a corner of the house, and I'm on the first floor right now. So if I have a cook off of a round, I'm either going to lose some books or my deposit. So don't worry about it. And I'll try to maintain muzzle discipline at all times. Back to the light itself. As you can see, it's mounted securely onto the rifle. Uh, even though uh, I've actually dropped this rifle while shooting at the range and it's done nothing to loosen the mount onto the rail and it's done nothing to loosen the light onto the mount itself. And as I hold the rifle, let's see if I can get you a decent view of this right here. As I'm holding onto the rail underneath right here, as you can see, it's out of the way. It's not bumping into my hands and because it's offset, all I have to do is reach my thumb up. I do not have to break grip of the forend and I can push and activate the light. Now, I still need to reach forward in order to change the settings between, say, strobe, low, medium, and high. So, I'm going to have to choose what setting I want this on before I mount it, or I mean, uh, after I put it up. Uh, I'm going to have to know what setting I want to have it on. But other than that, it's really ergonomic. It's pretty much out of the way. And while we're on this, where I'm mounting the light is really important as well. As you can see, I have it mounted on the very, very end of the rail, and that's good because if you mount the light too far in the back of the rail, the barrel is going to get in the way and cast a shadow. Even here, mounted this far forward, right here, you can see the shadow of the barrel. But at the same time, I can't mount the light all the way at the front, right next to the muzzle, because if I do, all the powder and the flash is going to cause powder to get on top of the lens, and it's going to fog up, and it's going to subject the light to... Um, clouding up and you're gonna get less of a light signature. So it's a give and take. Uh, this is about as far forward as I can mount it. I'm pretty happy with that. I just have this one little shadow here on the side but otherwise it's a good wide beam and I really like it. So that is the offset mount from Olight sold separately. Hey, how's it going guys? I uh, wanted to show you another option that's offered separately from Olight is a pressure switch. All you do is you replace the standard push button switch here with this tail cap and then you have a line which I've looped underneath the rail of the rifle and as I turn it over it leads this small little base plate right here. Now I've used clear tape to attach it to the rail just so you can see what it looks like. However, I do not recommend using the clear tape. Uh, this is for demonstration purposes only. You'd want to use something like electrical tape or a speed tape in order to secure it. Now as I'm holding the foreign, it's out of the way and then if I want to activate the light on my rifle, I just reach up and apply a little bit of pressure and it turns on the light. So that just gives you another option of a way to mount the light onto your rifle. So that pretty much concludes my review of the Olight M20 Warrior. If you guys like what you see, contact the folks at gadzooks.com and they'll be able to get you one for your own collection. Thanks so much for watching guys and uh, have a great day.